Welcome to the third System C tutorial. Today we're going to learn how to synthesize the System C description that we have compiled and simulated before. For this, we need a commercial high level synthesis tool. In this case, we're going to use Cyber Workbench from NEC. There are many other commercial high level synthesis tools out there like Vivado HLS or Cadence C2S uh, for the synthesizer or Calyptus Catapult, but in this case we're going to use Cyber Workbench. So the very first thing that we have to do as shown on the screen is to create a project with a workspace. Is we're going to create a project folder, in this case we're going to call it FIR. After that we can select if we're targeting an ASIC or an FPGA, but before doing that we have to specify our target frequency, in this case our default clock. We have to make sure that the units are correct. This is important for the high-level synthesis scheduler to actually optimize the timing of the synthesis. In our case we selected a uh, 20 nanoseconds, which basically means a, a clock of 50 megahertz. We then select the FPGA that we're targeting. In this case, it will be a Vertex 5. We select the family name, the device name, the package, and the speed grade of the FPGA. And we select the synthesis tool. In this case, we're going to use ISC from Xilinx. Um, the next step before we can actually synthesize the description is to select the delay libraries of the Xilinx FPGAs. Normally the high-level synthesis tool vendors provide either a library characterizer to generate these for you or they already pre-characterize those libraries with the area and delay information of basic components in your system. So we have selected those libraries and after having done that we can then import the system C files that we compiled and simulated in the previous tutorial. This case we're going to navigate to find those FIR files. And then we can import the header files as well. These will be imported into the project. We can also import the test bench for simulation for verification purposes later on after we have synthesized the description. So we also select the header files and we import these into our project. Once the files have been imported, the very first thing to do, here we can see the system C description important to the project, is to analyze, to parse the C system C description to make sure there are no syntactical errors. So once we have reviewed the system C description, we're going to parse it. We parse the description, we analyze the description, and the high-level synthesis tool will tell us if it finds any, any syntax errors. In this case, it analyzed correctly, and it shows you all the, the correct synthesis, uh, analyze report. Now, it has created a folder where we can actually start synthesizing the description. For that, we have to specify some synthesis options, and high-level synthesis tools have many, many options in order to control, for example, loops, how to, if we need to unroll them, not unroll them, how to synthesize the arrays, functions, and so on. And the only thing that you need to specify is actually, in this case, the synthesis mode that this high-level synthesis tool has, for example, if we want to fully pipeline this description or not. This is the only thing we're going to specify now. And then, before we synthesize the description, we need to create what's called the constraint file. We need to create the user constraint file and specify how many functional units we allow the synthesizer to in instantiate. So this is what we're doing. This is the resource allocation stage of high-level synthesis. So we're creating the constraint file now, shown on the screen, and we and we can see from a dialog window that this FIR filter requires some errors and some multipliers. We can modify that constraint file to vary the amount of resource sharing, the parallelism that we want to extract from our description. And once we do that, we can then synthesize the description and do what's called high-level synthesis as shown in the screen. And as it's shown, it's just, just finished. We can get the delay information and the report with the area consumed, the delay information and the latency of the circuit. 
we can also look at the data path generated of the FIR filter. In this case, the latency will be one cycle, so it can execute all the FIR computation one thing in a single clock cycle. And it shows you then the schematic here. The very last step is to choose if you want to create Verilog or VHDL. Like this high level synthesis tool allows you to generate both language, a hardware description language, and that we, there we can see the generated very low code for this FIR filter written in System C. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. If you have any questions, please drop me a line. Thank you very much.